Hello and welcome and welcome to Scene Lighting. So today we're doing a cinematography breakdown for the video Been Thinking by the art artist um, Tyler. And um, I think it was shot by the director Major Alabi and the cinematographer Matthew Emvin. E-M-V-I-N. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But yeah, here's another break video following up from the lighting breakdown whereby we just um, catch up and do some of these interesting ways on how you can approach your lighting and take some concepts from these um, talented artists and um, creators and see how you can apply to your own um, local library of um, projects and see how they can um, help you get more out of it. We're also running a competition whereby we're giving out a thousand dollars. You could check in the link below to see if you've not joined. It ends by June. So get in the family, get in the tribe and let's all make great things together. So without going much, let's just first of all scrub through the video. It's, this one is quite interesting because one of those videos whereby the camera move played a lot, although the lighting actually was still amazing, but a lot of the interest and the energy came from how the camera motion could deliver such kind of energy that translated into the um, visuals that we see. So, <clears throat> so we start with the pull-out shot whereby the camera just pulls out and we cut to some bureau, I mean some other um, bureau shot and we continue the pull-outs and we continue some beauty shots, creating interest, body in frame, sleek, everything. It continues for a bit and we go into some performance shots and some more bureaus and just dynamic camera move. So we're just like um, scrolling through it just to have an overview of what the entire video is. So she's dancing and she's been thinking, um, I do not know the lyrics of the song, so but yeah, it's just, um, more energetic visuals, look at me shaking, shaking, shaking. Uh, have a great body, there's this cool guy, he's all sweaty and oily, and he has snake eyes, and I'm on a pedestal, like looks like a cake, and there's, oh yeah, there's this one kawaii effect where you're using slow shutter. You can see here, and everybody's like all hazy, and the guy's like looking, moving slower. Uh, this is usually done by shooting at a very slow shutter speed. So you have more motion blur in frame, like you can see here, you have like more motion blur. And a lot of the levels in this, com um, this video is a lot very low, like there's a lot of underexposure going on, but it's really talented artists, so there's a lot of really separation that's happening. So if we turn on our first color for this bit, you would notice like, you can see how low the exposure is, like it's just, the skin on its own is set around one stop underexposed already, and the next side is like, already going to three stops on the exposed. So most likely to be able to get these cleaner shadows, you may have to like shoot at lower ISOs, like maybe at your 400 or something that's below the normal rated so you can move the dynamic range of the camera down into the shadow parts you get. And I will just scroll through it so that we can like scrub through faster. So we have like performance shots, we have like the camera moves and back to that same scene that's by the car in different costumes, the same scene. So it's just a color of several scenes and different camera angles and we'll soon end at the end of the video. Okay, so let's go to the beginning and actually now break this properly. Great. So um, we start with the pull out on steady cam, and this is like the same room setting, but if you look, you can see this, like, this will be the top view of the couple of shots that's yet to come. Presently, if you look at um, this shot, you can see the light is coming from the right hand side and it's quite hard based on this pillow shadows that you can absorb, um, observe here. And there's also like some other light source here that's also diffusing this shadow here that's um, coming up on the rails, which becomes more evident when we go into this shot as this shot also is also a continuation for another interesting shot that I'll show you in the future. So yes, if you look at this shot now, you can see what I'm saying. There's a soft hop method that's going here, um, soft on the body, uh, I mean hard on the body, soft on the face. You can see the oils is picking much of the highlights of the light that's coming through. We can see the shadow that's coming here. And also on this reel, we have like foreground interest that is um, adding dynamicness to the frame just to eliminate the whole boringness of the shot. And we have more beauty shots. Um, that's just designed to show curves and um, sex appeals or beauty appeals. I guess that's like the bane of most music videos. Um, that continues for a bit. We cut back to that same shot again. We continue, yes. Now here's an interesting shot that we'll um, look in together. So if you look at this shot, 
uh, there's a lot of things that's happening. We have this neg wall that's happening across the frame here that's creating the negative side, the downside you can see on her face. Over the neg wall, we have like some HMI or sky panel that is um, lighting this wall, creating an entire wash that creates the contrast against the color temperature of um, tungsten that's coming in from in the windows with hard light creating these lines of visual interest. Why do you have leading lines that's created by this building to create like a vanishing point in terms of the framing? And we have like a side key source that is, we have like a side key source coming in from the left side of the frame that is actually becoming her key and also a top light that you can see um, by the nose shadow and also the line that's actually coming to give um, this definition and shape to the face you get. And I think it's a lot more isolated because it's not spinning over to the ladies on the side, it's just well on her. And I think it, um, for the side, yeah, for the side um, source, it's just merely chipping in and um, raising this side of the frame while we have like our neck that this wall is becoming our neck that's creating this contrast. If we check our first color, it's a lot more obvious that it's been lit from the top. You can see all the gray and um, the neutral gray is coming in from the highlight to the chest, Why most of the downside that's coming from the neck of the wall where we have like two stops on the exposure is coming from the right side of the frame as opposed to this side that is just one stop over, ex um, one stop underexposed compared to that. So the contrast ratio here is not that much. You get, and um, middle gray is still existing on the wall wherever we have either the sky panel or the HMI that's making those levels and um, the windows are actually um, one stop slash, yeah, a couple of stops, just one stop or some points that have some hotspots that are two stops of exposed, but all is just to create visual interest, you get. So the ones that are in shot, like these ones are the ones that are like two stop over exposed, but the rest are just one stop over exposed. So everything is just within a small contrast um, ratio gap of like one to two stop, which is not as steep as our last week video whereby we're working with Sky. Um, Open-ended exteriors. Here's a lot more interiors and in this shot, they're gonna repeat it later in the future, but with a change of costume. Now you can now see what I'm saying of the side key that's coming in because you can now see there's like a red, a clearly a red um, um, key that's actually adding to the tungsten field that's actually um, coming in on her. So just like the other shot, whereby you can now see the hard light is now coming up more to the face here. Um, same scene, more bureaus, um, same alleyway shot, but I, I believe the same alleyway because of the walls, but I may be wrong, but you have um, Titan tubes for interest, a lot of um, string lights just to create visual interest, some toppy sauce. Now the cameras want to do most of the heavy work, creating a movement that actually makes it more appealing and all this, um, signs that are on the side, like the light signs on the left and the right, are just also creating more visual interest. If you continue now, there's a whip pan by Steadicam that creates more dynamism into the next scene. We continue with some top lights and it's like oil skin is like the theme of the video to be able to catch most of these highlights since most of the time they're underexposing. So the shine from the oil gives us like the most interesting part that they want our eyes to go to. Yeah, so we get more of that with some DMX programming that's creating most of these pulsing effects, which is the hallmark of a music video, creating visual interest. It continues for a whole lot of it. As you can see, it's, more, it's just way more toppy. You can see the shadows, it's clear defined, it's almost like it's more smaller source due to the hardness of the shadows and where it's coming from. And the mirror creates depth because you have this in the foreground and that is like the main frame of the shot and the rest is like lost into darkness, like you can see. <clears throat> Most of the shot, the, the room tone keeps it just barely underexposed so it doesn't fall in, jet black into the shadows and you don't have noisy shadows. So you have like a room tone that's actually keeping us two stops underexposed on the background and the key is just um, one uh, or a half stop underexposed judging by our uh, Edmund Lackman zone. Um, I really like Edmund Lackman zone because it, it really allows me to see the ratio that exists within the entire image. Then we continue to the interest, whereby we have the choreography and the pushing in with the wide angle, where you have way more interest because it's, it's just more interesting um, going through hands of people. So that continues for a bit. Now here's another interesting one. So for this, 
we have um, um, our DMX is still playing a role because you can still see the pulsing light, but there's this whole toppy sauce and a small feel that's actually um, raising up this side of her face. You get that makes our key light because if we turn on first color, you can see just barely keeping it half stop on the exposed here and we have like the background windows that are actually creating visual interest all to draw our eyes into this um, um, part of the frame in jet black so that's why it's a low key video it's not like that noisy you get and we have like the main key like that's coming from the other side of the glass whereby you can see um, it's on the forehead and you have like a neck on this side the camera stays on the shadowy side to be able to um, go from like um, dark to light to dark again to light to dark and it's just keeping on creating visual interest. So the video continues, we're back at the dance hall, if we we'll call this a dance hall, we have the chandeliers for interest, um, most of this um, frosted windows to be able to give texture to the environment why it's been lit. So those are like the so I, I would like to call them the room tones, why most of the moving heads are the ones that's creating like dynamic lighting to it. So there's all of that going on to be able to highlight people like in the background, yeah, by, they're like more hard source and stuff. But you can see just the key, but for some ever reason the face is in the shade though. I was thinking maybe like a photo spot or something to be able to just elevate the face back. All this could be depending on the architecture that the cinematographer is just facing, is facing with, you get. So you can see most of the light seems to always just come below the chest and there's like the hot backlight, but nothing is really accentuating the face. Um, the camera dynamic movement and that could be like a crane that then we come into the real steady cam groove whereby you know, we have like more visual interest of rules of the camera and we have like the moving lights here that you can see keep moving and we have um, the stained glass actually now create more texture but then they flip the color temperature to become um, um, blue and we have more higher contrast ratio and less fill into the shadows because there's some fill going here that's maintaining the floor at two stops under Right, it's only the people on black pants that are dropping like to like three and four stops, which is like the lady here, here. There's some level that's going on the floor and that creates that. But the window still draws our eyes in and the framework is designed, um, the entire frame is designed for um, being able to catch your interest and energy and stuff. And that's like the theme of the video. Um, I think Tyler has been thinking of some party sessions. Visual interest continues, which is the entire theme of the video. Then we'll come back to that same scene. Remember that car and the windows and the background? You can see the wall that's at the back. Now we have like a key, a key here. This is probably either a magic cloth or um, it's not it's not bleach muslin because of the way the no shadows had. So it could either be magic cloth, satin, or half grid. Something that softens up the light but makes it a little bit more hard. You get then the Ambient light that's coming out from the entire ambience here is just casting this edge light on her that we can see here. So this edge light that you can see here is the one that's giving us visual interest. So we have like light to dark to light to dark to light to dark to light. So it's just layering the light in such a way whereby you can actually follow through. You can see her face now. It's, she's not like properly exposed. You get skin tones just barely on... Um, on middle gray and a little bit of it is like half stop over exposed and drastically goes to like an under exposure of like one stop goes to like under three stops you get key to fill is like one ratio three here and just um, the background is held at um, um, minus one stop you get and even the sky the ambience which is what this is is held at one stop and this is all beautiful stuff you get this is how you make beautiful images here she's left her key light like you can see so she's going down into the shadows it's no longer as it's like way in the shadows now just because of the move she's making or the moving lights that's pulsing one of one or both of them is causing that you can also see the reflection of the car that suggests like this yeah like top lights that's actually creating um, the room tone for the shadows so that it's not like all lost in darkness on the floor which is the same light, but this time a different angle or looking up and creating um, a frame, a, an interesting frame. And that continues for most of the video, whereby we can now see more of the sauciness of the light when we come into the shot. It hazed it up, the, the cabin becomes um, God rays in the shot here. 
you have the key light is also coming there still maintain that same visual turn we still have our room tone now when i have more interest in the windows because it's like a different perspective and you have like the background element keeping it busy and also the car itself is illuminated with its own um, rgb lighting music videos are actually fun you just there are no rules you just make it as pretty and as visually interesting as it can be you get using camera movements lights and set pieces and some haze you get so that continues we get more of the dust of the earth and the whole haze giving this layered steaming feel and there's probably some ultra contrast that's been placed on the lens here to be able to like um, keep everything a lot more even and a little bit more easy to be able to maintain them and yes it continues like that for a bit till we get to the end of the video whereby we just have um, one strong magenta light going across the face not the favorite color i like but yeah it's not so great for skin tones nobody likes magenta skin tones at least i don't so that's it for the video um been thinking by tyler directed by major labi and cinematographer by matthew ebrin if i pronounce that right um, if you found this useful you can leave us a thumbs up share it with somebody who can benefit from it and subscribe to the channel whereby we'll create this community in helping ourselves grow and become better storytellers if you haven't joined on the contest check the description below and join in and be part of the family and um next video we'll, we'll try and work on something different but this was just like a follow-up to some of the lightings we'll be doing if you have any video you're also interested in us for breaking down you can send recommendations and we'll look into it and see how we can break that down okay and until next time when i see you improvise adapt and overcome